Welcome back. Without further ado, let's begin our discussion on dental prophylaxis, starting with the preoperative considerations. Generally, dental prophylaxis has five steps. Supragingival scaling, subgingival scaling, polishing, irrigation, and a fluoride treatment. But before we go into that, we have to discuss what we have to do before the actual surgery. Dental prophylaxis is the comprehensive cleaning of the teeth through removal of all plaque and calculi from the teeth in the subgingival areas. This procedure requires, yes, requires anesthetic induction to perform effective and complete dental cleaning. I put emphasis on this because a lot of practices are instituting non-anesthetic dentistry to give a false solution for the patients with high anesthetic risk who need dental prophylaxis. Without anesthesia, only the first part of the dental prophylaxis procedure can be done, and it's poorly performed with high risk of causing more harm to the animal. How so? Number one, it gives clients a false sense of improved dental health for their pets. They see the clean crowns, but the plaque and the calculus under the gums remain. Also, you're not able to do your periodontal probing, so you do not have an idea as to what grade of periodontal disease that patient may be in. Knowing the pathophysiology of the disease, the entire root of the problem is not resolved or even diagnosed. There, number two, there is a high risk of iatrogenic damage. The instruments that we use during dental procedures can cause lacerations to the gingiva when the patient suddenly moves because they are awake. In some cases, it can be it can lead to jaw fractures and neck injuries following a restraint. Also, the risk of aspiration pneumonia is very high because no intubation is done. General anesthesia is necessary provided it is well done and well curated for the patients with high anesthetic risk or with a cardiovascular or respiratory compromise. For compliant patients, initial inspection of the oral cavity can be done by lifting its lip as seen in this picture, or even lowering its mandible. You can have a wide picture of the degree of the disease progression, which will help you create an anesthetic plan. Severe periodontal diseases can predispose the animals to more systemic disease, which can increase the anesthetic risk. You must unite the initial oral examination and the health status of the animal, identified through physical exam and blood tests, to create a holistic picture of the patient's health status. Identification of any cardiac, renal, hepatic, or other diseases can easily affect the anesthetic protocol and the patient's immune system and length of recovery. According to multiple studies done by University of Lisbon and Purdue University, periodontal disease has been found to be linked to the incidence of infectious endocarditis in dogs. The entire mechanism of this is still unknown, but initial researchers are theorizing that the bacteria from the mouth can seep into the adjacent soft tissues and invade the vascular supply, which causes bacteremia. This bacteremia can cause the spread of the anaerobic and antibiotic-resistant bacteria to other organs. One bacterial species is repeatedly pointed out in this disease process. Now, it's your assignment to find out what bacterial species that is. Routinely, antibiotics and analgesics are administered preoperatively. As we have discussed, presence of systemic diseases are not contraindications for general anesthesia for patients undergoing dental prophylaxis. 
An optimal anesthetic protocol must be created for each patient to make sure of a safe and smooth anesthetic induction, maintenance, and recovery. Avoiding anesthesia in dental patients may lead to incorrect or misdiagnosis and delayed treatment, resulting in prolongation of pain and progression of the dental disease. Honestly, um, one limitation of veterinary practitioners here in the Philippines is the availability of the drugs which could make anesthesia safer and smoother. For example, methadone and midazolam are very common drugs that are used in other countries, but in here, it is S2 restricted, and yes, it costs a lot. Some of you have experienced anesthetiz anesthetizing dogs already. In surgery one, using Zolotil is really never enough to produce a smooth anesthesia. Well, unless Zolotil is combined with Silazine. More than that, induction drugs are only given to remove the gag reflex to facilitate endotracheal intubation which is a prerequisite of a dental prophylaxis. Question, why do we need to intubate patients undergoing this procedure? Number one, gas anesthesia, which is delivered through the endotracheal tube, is safer than drug inductions given through IV or IM. An endotracheal tube also seals the trachea from the entry of bacteria-laden fluids, which will be in the oral cavity during the prophylaxis procedure. The tube also avoids aspiration pneumonia and spread of the bacteria, like what we discussed in number two. Prompt and vigilant anesthetic monitoring must be done throughout the entire surgical procedure. This includes ECG, pulse oximetry, and non-invasive blood pressure. A table, rather, the image on the left shows you some factors that may reduce anesthetic risk in patients with cardiovascular diseases. Read all those and reflect as to how they are used and the benefits. In the next lecture, we will discuss a few dental instruments and equipment used during dental prophylaxis. Thanks and see you then.